Hello class, this is Fire Service Hydraulics and Water Supply, Chapter 1, Water as an Extinguishing Agent. After completing this lesson, you shall be able to describe how the physical characteristics of water relate to its extinguishing capabilities. The first learning objective we're going to cover is we will be describing the basic characteristic of water itself. We will also be explaining how the law of specific heat and the law of latent heat vaporization relate to water as a firefighting agent or a fire extinguishing agent. And we will list the common advantages and disadvantages of water as a fire extinguishing agent. The basic characteristics of water we're going to cover first. Water is a chemical compound, two parts hydrogen or one, two atoms of hydrogen bound with one atom of oxygen, H2O. It freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 degrees centigrade, boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 centigrade, and it comes in three physical states. Water is incompressible in its liquid state, which makes it very useful for firefighting. Now there is a review question that will be on your test what characteristic of water makes it particularly useful for firefighting? You can see page five of the manual for that answer. Water is a chemical compound, as we mentioned, H2O. And again, it freezes at 32 Fahrenheit, zero centigrade, boils at 212 Fahrenheit, or 100 degrees centigrade, and comes in three physical states. Again, water is incompressible in its liquid state, which makes it very useful for firefighting. But its three states are solid, liquid, and gas. Also, make sure to write this down and remember it. It is in your text. One cubic foot of water is 7.48 gallons. These are all things you're going to need to know. That 7.48 gallons weighs 62.4 pounds and one gallon of water weighs 8.3 pounds per gallon. Just to kind of put that to a different visual for you, water is incompressible as a liquid, so it's good for firefighting. And one cubic foot of water contains 7.48 gallons and incompressibility is extremely important for water to move freely and that's what makes it so good for firefighting. When it comes to weight of water, it can vary slightly at different temperature. It becomes more dense near its freezing point and least dense near its boiling point. Now, ordinary fresh water is typically assigned a weight of 62.4 pounds per square foot, or 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Seawater weighs slightly more. There's a formula right there at the bottom. It's also in your book. Review question. What characteristic of water makes it particularly useful for firefighting? We already said that it's incompressible. This is in your book, and this is a review question that you will see on future quizzes and tests. Learning objective two. In this learning objective, we will explain how the law of specific heat and the law of latent heat of vaporization relate to water as a fire extinguishing agent. The basic extinguishing properties of water. Let's review these. Cooling is the primary manner. Smothering may also occur to a lesser extent. And steam displaces heat, smoke, and fire gases. Now let's discuss the law of specific heat. Specific heat describes a substance's cap capacity to absorb heat. It's expressed as a ratio between any substance's heat absorbing capacity and that of water. Water can absorb a large amount of heat. Heat absorption, or more accurately heat transfer, occurs when heat flows from a warmer object to a cooler object. Amounts of heat are measured in British thermal units, BTUs, or in joules, known as J, capital J. 
and one British thermal unit or BTU equals 1,055 kilojoules. A BTU is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit. The joule, also a unit of work, has replaced the calorie in the international system of units, heat measurements. So one calorie equals 4.19 joules. Specific heat of any substance is the ratio between the amount of heat needed to raise temperature of a specified quantity of that substance and the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of an identically identical quantity of water by the same number of degrees. Water is the best material for absorbing heat. If you look at the table below, this is also in your text, page six. It's table 1.1 and it lists the specific heat of extinguishing agents. Water has a specific heat of one, calcium chloride, 0.7, carbon dioxide, solid, 0.12, carbon dioxide, 0.19, and sodium bicarbonate, 0.22. You must know the specific heats of each of these. So again, review the table and the notes related to it it's on page six in your book. Now let's talk about the law of latent heat of vaporization. Latent heat of vaporization is the amount of heat that water can absorb when it changes from a liquid to a vapor state. The temperature at which liquid absorbs enough heat to change to vapor is known as its boiling point. Vaporization does not occur the instant water reaches boiling point. That's only the threshold at which it can happen. And each pound of water requires approximately 970 BTUs of additional heat to complete the conversion to steam. Each pound of water requires approximately 970 BTUs of additional heat to convert to steam, as we mentioned. The ability of water to vaporize at relatively low temperature can make it a very effective extinguishing agent. And you see that demonstrated here on this slide. And bear in mind also that the ability to water to vaporize at relatively low temperatures, again, makes it a very effective extinguishing agent. Continuing with the law of latent heat of vaporization, a gallon of water at 60 degrees absorbs more than 9,000 BTUs if it is totally converted into steam. Water's specific heat is significant in fighting fire because its temperature does not increase above 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees centigrade during absorption of the additional 970 BTUs. So it absorbs a huge amount of energy before it's totally converted into steam. And just to phrase it a different way, one gallon or 3.76 liters of water at 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 16 degrees centigrade will absorb 9,357 BTUs of heat if the entire gallon is to be converted into steam. Continuing with the law of latent heat of vaporization, three things we need to discuss here. First, attacking fire with one and a half inch or 38 millimeter hose equipped with 100 gallons per minute or 400 lengths per minute fog nozzle and 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 16 degrees Celsius water. That's pretty standard attack. If it is discharged into highly heated area and completely converts to steam, the water will absorb approximately 935,700 BTUs of heat per minute. The amount of heat absorbed will be somewhat less than the theoretical maximum. Now we'll talk about the importance of steam in firefighting. For firefighting purposes, water is said to expand 1700 times its original size when it converts to steam. So the more steam is produced, the greater its ability to smother a fire. And remember that 1 to 1700 water to steam conversion ratio. 
The actual amount of steam produced will depend on a number of factors. The amount of heat, how enclosed the space is, the temperature of the water, the available surface area of the water, and in extremely hot atmospheres, water expands to steam in much greater volume. Continuing with the water to steam ratio, remember that it may expand more in superheated atmospheres and a relatively small volume of fire can extinguish a large volume of fire in an enclosed space also. So looking at the water to steam ratio, you can see in the diagram, it occupies 1700 times its original space. That's when water converts to steam. It absorbs more heat faster, cooling fuel below ignition temperatures. It displaces hot gases, smoke, and other products of combustion. And in some cases may smother a fire by excluding oxygen altogether. A nozzle discharging 100 gallons or 400 liters of water for one minute will generate enough steam to fill a 10 foot or 3.1 meter by 25 foot or 8 meter by 68 foot or 20.7 meter room. That's what you see there on your diagram. Now let's talk about the amount of heat generated by fuel. The amount of heat a combustible object can produce depends upon the material from which it is composed. The rate at which that object gives off heat depends on its physical form, the amount of surface exposed, and air or oxygen supply. The greater the surface area, the faster water absorbs heat. Many little droplets are better than fewer big droplets. So let's talk about the surface area of water. Speed with which water absorb heats, absorbs heat increases in proportion to the surface area of water exposed to heat. A one inch or 25 millimeter cube of ice will absorb heat slower than, it is, than if it is divided into one eighth inch cubes. If water is divided into many drops, its rate of heat absorption increases hundreds of times. So basically they're just showing you the finer the droplet, the more able it is to absorb heat, more rapidly it is able to absorb heat. Okay, a couple of review questions. These will appear on future quizzes and tests. The first, what is the primary way in which water extinguishes fire? You can check that information on page five in your manual. And the second review question is, what does the law of specific heat say about water's capacity for absorbing heat? And how is this useful in firefighting? You can see pages five and six of your manual for the answers to those two questions. Two more review questions. According to the law of latent heat vaporization, what makes water a very extin effective extinguishing agent? You can seek the information on page six of your manual. And how can you increase water's rate of heat absorption? See page nine of your manual for that answer. For learning objective three, we will list the advantages and disadvantages of water as a fire extinguishing agent. Some advantages of water as a fire extinguishing agent include, one, it has a greater heat capacity, heat absorbing capacity than other common extinguishing agents. A relatively large amount of heat is required to change water into steam. The greater the surface area of water exposed, the more rapidly heat is absorbed. As a rule of thumb, water covered into steam, converted into steam occupies 1700 times its original volume. It is inexpensive and ready and available in most jurisdictions, and it is incompressible and non-combustible. Some disadvantages of water as a fire extinguishing agent. One, considerable amounts of surface tension, which limits its ability to soak or penetrate combustibles. That's one disadvantage of water. And also, wetting agents mixed with water will reduce water's surface tension and increase its penetrating ability. Water has a considerable amount of surface tension, and violent reactions can occur when water is applied to certain water reactive materials, whether it, they're on fire or not. Some things that you should beware spraying water on aluminum, magnesium, titanium, zirconium, sodium, and potassium. 
They can either cause a violent reaction or they can burst into flame when you hit water onto them. Sodium is one big one. Some disadvantages, we're continuing with some disadvantages of water as a fire extinguishing agent. When you're dealing with class D materials, there are usually more suitable extinguishing agents other than water for these materials that are available. Another problem with water is it freezes at a temperature that's common in many jurisdictions. So you have slipping and sticking hazards on equipment, roofs, ladders, and other surfaces. And some more disadvantages of water as fire extinguishing agent when you're dealing in an ice and snow environment. Ice may cause equipment to malfunction, and the weight of ice on ladders and aerial devices may cause overloading or failure. Water also has a low viscosity, meaning it doesn't readily adhere to vertical surfaces. Water that a firefighter uses conducts electricity, and it's very important to be aware of energized electrical equipment during firefighting operations. These are all some disadvantages of water as a firefighting extinguishing agent. Okay, some more review questions. First one, list at three least three characteristics of water that make it an excellent extinguishing agent. You can see page nine of your manual for information and answer to that question. And the second one is list at least three of water's disadvantages as an extinguishing agent. And you can see page 10 in your manual for some details to answer that question. Okay class, that's it for chapter one. If you do have any questions or need clarification regarding anything in this chapter, make sure to contact your instructor. Thank you, and we'll see you for Chapter 2.